When Kara and I were going over our summer plans, one of the theme parks that continued to be mentioned was Epcot. During our Disney family vacation last year, we ended up omitting Epcot from our itinerary to allow us to visit SeaWorld Orlando and Busch Gardens Tampa. Well, now that they have their new roller coaster Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and the fact that we haven't been to this park since 2009, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to revisit this Disney theme park. Well, as I was going through our travel budget, I knew that Disney was going to be expensive, but little did I know that one day at Disney would account for more than 30% of our entire 10-day family vacation budget. In this video, I'm going to break down all our expenses that occurred on May 30th, 2023, which is the day that we went to Epcot. Before we get to the expenses and whatnot, do me a favor by clicking on that like button, and if you are new to my channel, love theme parks and roller coasters, make sure you subscribe. All right, before even taking a step onto Disney property, the first purchase I had to make was park tickets. A family of four, the total came to $624. If we split that evenly amongst all four, each ticket, including tax, comes to $156. If you take a look at their website, daily tickets range in price depending on that day and park you are visiting. The prices vary between $109 all the way to $189. Booking a date near the end of May, our tickets seem to land right in the middle of that price range. The next major purchase of the day would be Genie Plus. For those who don't know, Genie Plus is their skip the line program at Disney World. Because this was a one day trip and the fact that we haven't been to Epcot in over 10 years, I felt that getting Genie Plus was the right move for our vacation. In the end, this purchase did improve our day and allowed us to ride every attraction we wanted in the park. Now, if I were to revisit this park again in the near future, I would skip the Genie Plus option. For a family of four, the total came to $106.52, or $26.63 per person. Since we took a complimentary shuttle service that was provided through our hotel, we didn't have to worry about parking. However, for those who are going to drive, daily parking is $25. Our next major expense was booking our dining experience. Normally, I wouldn't consider doing sit-down dining at the parks, but since this was our only day here at Epcot, and during our last year visit to Disney World, we missed the opportunity to see Mickey, and Kara wants to see Mickey. Thankfully, the Garden Grill restaurant has character dining with no other than Mickey Mouse in appearance. Dining for the entire family came to $230.23, or roughly $57.56, per person. Just like I said about the Genie Plus, my next visit to Epcot, we would omit character dining and focus on the wide variety of food offered in the World Showcase. Our final purchase before even entering the park gate is going to be the Lightning Lane for Guardians of the Galaxy attraction. As of right now, this attraction is only available through a virtual queue system. Once the queue comes available online at 7am I think it was, you had to quickly reserve your time before the slots filled up. We managed to grab a slot, but please note, as I said a virtual queue but it's more of a boarding system if anything. When your group number is called, which can vary depending on a few factors, you might be at the other end of the park or stuck waiting in another line. You are given a window of time to return to the attraction, which can be stressful especially when that window of time keeps changing as the day goes on. Well, our initial plan was to ride Guardians of the Galaxy twice, and this boarding system only allows you to sign up once. The only other way to ride the second time is to purchase a Lightning Lane. Unlike the boarding system where you still have to wait through the full queue, the Lightning Lane allows you to skip that full queue and reduce your overall wait time. My son wasn't quite ready for this attraction, and hindsight, neither was my daughter, but anyways, for three people, Lightning Lane cost $54.33, which is $18.11 per person. So to recap, before even walking through the park gate, we've already spent $1,000. $15.18. From here on out, the rest of the spending is basically food purchased at the various stands inside the World Showcase. We spent $33.30 at the Kringola Bakery. I'm sorry to all my Disney fanatics. I'm sure I'm going to butcher some of these names, but oh well. This was a bakery inside of Norway near the Frozen Ride. Next is $11.20 at the Kabuchi Cafe, which I think is located in Japan. Then we have $29.29 spent in Mexico. I mean, you gotta check out those nachos. 
nachos and margaritas, am I right? The final food expense was the cafeteria inside the Connections building, which came to $28.08. Alright, enough of the food, let's get to the souvenirs. For the most part, I never buy souvenirs outside of our Christmas ornament that we get like at every theme park. But at Disney, we did let the kids pick out a special item. Everything is expensive in our gift shops, which is why it's no surprise that our one and only purchase of souvenirs came to $113.92. This was inside the Creations gift shop. Okay, so if we total all of this up, we come to $1,231.46. To put this into perspective, this is about the same amount of money I spent purchasing platinum passes for the whole family inside the Cedar Fair chain. Recently, there has been a few articles floating around saying that attendance at Disney is declining. I'm sure that there are many things that factor into this, but I'm sure their prices don't favor well. Granted, as I've already demonstrated, you don't have to spend this amount of money to enjoy the parks. In fact, the next time I visit, I don't plan to spend this amount of cash. Things I would do different. First, there's no reason to get Genie Plus. Most of the rides outside of Test Track, Soren, Frozen, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Ratatouille, the lines are on the shorter side. And with those attractions I just mentioned, if you stay on property, you can hit up at least three of those attractions during their early access time, beating the morning crowds. It is very possible to ride everything that you want in one day at Epcot. Next recommendation, skip the character dining. You should be spending your money on the wide variety of food and drinks offered throughout the World Showcase. Sure, it is nice to sit inside, meet multiple characters, which if that's your priority, then sure, but I think Epcot is all about sampling the various food throughout the park, so blowing your entire budget in one restaurant, probably not the best idea. Finally, souvenirs are totally up to you, buy what you want, but again, if you're trying to cut costs, this is the easiest category to drop. Well, that about does it for my expenses at Disney. What do you think? Did I spend way too much money at Epcot, or would you have spent more? Tell me all about it in the comments. Till next time, this is X-Screen Thrills.